Hello and welcome to the Rolling Doubles Podcast. My name is Ryan and I am here day one, Origins, Columbus, Ohio. And I am with a very special friend, the first ever on-site podcast press media interview with Cole Worley of Leader Games. Cole, hello and thank you for being on the show. It's my pleasure, Ryan. Thanks for having me. So, Cole, uh, Leader Games has quite a presence at uh, Origins this year. What are you showing off today for convention goers? So we've got a big square booth kind of in the center of the hall, and we are showing Vast the Mysterious Manor, a production copy, and we're running two tables with the new root material. So if people want to see what the Underworld expansion is all about, they can come right to our booth. So Mysterious Manor is a, what kind of a game is it from the previous game, uh, Vast of Crystal Caverns? So it's the same basic concept. You're looking at five deeply asymmetric roles. There's a hero role, a monster role, a setting role but the games share no mechanical overlap. So the Mysterious Manor feels a little bit more tactical, a little bit less of an adventure game, a little <laughs> more like a micro-tactics game. Um, every single roll, too, we try to really sharpen the asymmetry and take a lot of the lessons that we learned in Root and put them into practice. And, of course, we didn't want to leave the Crystal Caverns behind, so if you have both games, you can migrate a lot of the roles back and forth. So it's both a fully f featured game and a standalone expansion. That's really awesome. So. Uh, with these new roles, uh, what are the specific roles that people can expect in the base game? So one player plays the paladin. The paladin is going into the manor, hunting and killing the spider. The paladin plays a little bit like the knight, but is, as its class would indicate, a little bit more of a spellcaster. Has some really interesting kind of game warping effects. The paladin has to watch out though because he's being hunted by a band of skeletons who are playing kind of a tactical war game where they get bet bonuses to surrounding them. They also can equip interesting items that allow all sorts of wacky combinations. The spider the paladin is hunting is a little like the dragon in the sense that the spider relies on a hand of cards, but what separates the spider is that she's a shapeshifter. So she can move between three different forms, each has different points of vulnerability, but also different powers. And then of course there's the house itself. Um, you know, whereas the cave in the Crystal Caverns was very much about expanding and opening things up, the mysterious manor, true to a haunted house, is mostly about you know switching the rooms around, tricking people, getting them lost in corners. It has a very like madcap Scooby-Doo feel that we love. And then for a fifth player, we have the warlock, who is a little bit like the house and a little bit like, I mean, it's sort of a combination role of all the other roles. And the warlock is trying to entrap people within the house. So there's a little bit of manner play, but also relies on leveling up and getting spells a little bit like the paladin. We really like how the warlock turned out. You can play, there are, even though the game is, really sings with four players or five, we have tons of different combinations that allow it to be a really robust two and three player experience too. That's and it's a solo game. That's so awesome. Um, out of all the characters in the base, and this could also include the expansion, which is the Haunted Hallways, what is your favorite character that you like to play when playing for fun and not just testing? I love playing the manor. The manor is, so we have, we have bets in the office right now of who people are gonna think it's broken or powerful, too strong. And the manor right now is, to me, it like rewards the most study and the most deep understanding of the game. Because your first game is your manor, you need to get 14 points to win, you're gonna score like three. And you're gonna feel like it's impossible. But I love like the, I've loved the experience of getting better at the manor and starting to really get in the head because you have to really be controlling game length and game pacing, and you have tons of different tools for doing it. Yeah. So for me personally, uh, I was able to play the Haunted Hallways expansion, and, and the Shadow Paladin is like by far probably my most favorite, my favorite role to play because as you reveal, you can shift the tiles so that they don't connect together, and you get ruin tokens, and those are what power you up. And I really like that because you are very much up close and in, in front versus the spider, which is scurrying away. So yeah. I really like that. Yeah. The uh, so the, the shadow paladin, you know, as you said, generates all of his strength from closing off rooms and doesn't really have that much movement. And so it's a really interesting, like it feels like a little fight in a phone booth yeah. when you're fighting the paladin because oftentimes you're right next to each other, but you're having to build enough walls. It's a really interesting dynamic. That's awesome. When can uh, backers and the public get their hands on Mysterious Manor? So it will be on the boat in a, in a few days, hopefully, maybe a week or two. And then we're hoping to ship them 
either before Gen Con or after Gen Con. Um, it, it may be our release game for Gen Con, but we're only going to do that if it's in backers' hands. That's awesome. So also, very quickly, uh, Root and Underworld, you have the expansion here playable, doing some events. Uh, tell us briefly, what, do, what can people expect from the new uh, Root Underworld expansion? So the Underworld expansion adds a new map, two sides, a lake and a mountain, that are both crazy and introduce a lot of interesting new me mechanisms to the game. And then in addition, uh, the expansion also features two new factions. There's the Corvid Conspiracy, which feel a little bit like a crime syndicate, like they're part secret agents, part just jerks. And then the, the, uh, the Underground Duchy, which is sort of like a, a hybrid cross between the programming of the Eerie in the original game and the kind of building of the cats. And those two factions really blew open up the faction combination. So for people who like Root, with those two factions in the mix, you've got hundreds of new combinations you can play, yeah. and a lot of combinations that don't feature really any of the standard root uh, scenarios. In fact, you can even play with all expansion factions and have a perfectly good game. Yeah. <laughs> I played one of those, and it was wild. I'm yeah. not lying, it was a wild game. You just, I mean, one thing about Root, and the expansion has really made us all realize this on the development team, is that once you start doing weirder uh, combinations, a faction that might be really, really weak in a lot of circumstances is now like very strong. And so if you're like, man, the Eerie, they always get beat up in my four player combination. Well, in a certain combination, they'll be really strong. Yeah. So it gives you the experience of being like, what does this faction look like when it gets powerful? And that has allowed like this whole universe of type games to explore. That's awesome. Root Underworld, I think, is going to be a second great uh, expansion to Root. Uh, congratulations also. You guys racked up a very impressive 1.5 million on Kickstarter. Um, when, so, when can we expect to have, you know what, no, never mind. How can people get this game? That, that's, that's the question. So right now, even though our Kickstarter's over, we have a backer kit open, and the way we tend to run these things is if you are interested in our games, we, we want to help you out. So if you pre-order it, you get a ton of free stuff. Right now, even though the Kickstarter's done, you can go on and back and pre-order Root the Underworld expansion. You will get the expansion. You get a Vagabond pack. You get a completely new game deck to play with, with about 20, 23 new effects. And you get some beautiful resin clearing markers. Uh, and, and you get all of that basically for 50 bucks plus shipping. Yeah. Um, you can get that right now. That should be shipping in the late fall, or early winter. We're hoping to have it in everyone's hands by December. I think that's going to be awesome. So, Cole, thank you so very much. Again, first ever, woo, woo, on this podcast. Thank you so very much. And yes, if you are here at Origins uh, booth 245, uh, I'll be taking some pictures as well to share. So once again, thank you very much, Cole. Thank you, Ryan.